Hi guys, welcome to episode 12 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay, and you can find me as The Crazy Sock Lady on Instagram and Ravelry. And there is also a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you just search in the groups tab for Crazy Sock Lady podcast, you can find it there. That is where you can find any information about knit alongs, giveaways, anything fun that we have going on. Um, there's a thread to introduce yourself, so please head over there and do that. And you can also ask any questions that you may have. There's a thread for that as well. And we have a ton of fun chatter going on right now for the knit alongs that I'm currently hosting, which we will get into in just a bit. Um, I'm coming to you from Havelock, North Carolina, where I live with my husband, our two sons, and our two dogs, which, given the setup today, you may see scurrying about the little one anyways. The big one you'll see thundering about. She's like a big bear. Um, maybe. They're laying off screen, of course, so you can't see them right now. <laughs> but maybe they'll make a little bit of an appearance today. Speaking of the different setup, you guys let me know which one you like the best. I've tried quite a few here lately trying to find the one that has the best lighting that I'm most comfortable with. Um, I was in front of the bookshelf over there the past few times, I think, and it was nice very comfy because I was on the floor, <laughs> but maybe not the best as far as lighting goes. So hopefully this one will be better. Um, the windows are right behind the camera, so it's giving the best natural light I can probably get in the house. And a little bit better, normally when I first started I was sitting back there in front of my treadle machine, and that gave good light as well because you know I was still facing the windows, but this way I'm a little bit closer. And today I'm trying to squeeze as much natural light as I can out of these windows because it is such a dreary day and the lighting is not great. And that has kind of been the theme the past few podcasts, I think. It's been rainy and we've had so much rain here lately. A ton of rain. <laughs> the past few days it's just been rain, rain, and more rain. Um, but this weekend is supposed to be cold. There is a tiny chance that we might have some snow on Saturday. Uh, Wyatt is very excited about this, so hopefully we will just at least have some flurries. I am highly unlikely that anything will actually stick to the ground that will be enough to amount to anything, but if that kid could just see some flurries, he would be so excited. When we lived in Arizona, there was a wishing well, or not really a wishing well, I don't know why I say that, it was just a fountain outside of the movie theater, um, and every time we would go, you know people would throw finny, finnies, <laughs> pennies into the fountain. My goodness this morning, words are totally escaping me. They would throw pennies into the fountain. So you know you would see them along the bottom. So every time we would go, Wyatt would want to do this. His wish every time was that it would snow in Yuma, Arizona. Not gonna happen. So hopefully that kid can see some flurries. I just want to see the look on his face if he actually does get to see snow because he doesn't remember ever seeing it, ever which is crazy because he has, but he was very young. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for him that he'll get to see some snow and I will not mind the cold temperatures to tell you the truth. Okay, so today, let's give you a run through of what we're gonna go through. We have got some admin stuff to go through that will consist of the knit alongs that are going on and some that are coming up. I've got some finished objects, some works in progress, uh, cozy memories because it is the first podcast of the month. There were a few questions in the Ask Me thread, so we will go over that as well. And I do have a few goodies to show you that I have purchased recently. I may, <laughs> I may be bad, guys. Um, but yes, there are some goodies that I will show you. And then we will end with just some general chatter. I will leave that at the end so that if you are not interested, you do not have to listen. <laughs> but first, let's jump in with the knit-alongs that we have going on right now in the Ravelry group. There is the Sock Crazy Knit Along for 2017. This will be a year-long cow. Um, this is just as many socks as you can knit in 2017. There is no specific goal that you have to meet of one per month, etc. You can set a goal if you wish. Um, I've set a goal of 40. I did 35 socks in 2016, which is pretty crazy considering I just learned how to knit socks towards the beginning of 2016. Um, so 35, that's pretty good. So my goal for 2017 is 40. 
I figured I would up that a little bit. I may not get to that. I have so many things I want to knit, which we'll talk about more in chatter, um, kind of goals for this year. But I may not get to that, but if I don't, you know, there isn't a specific goal for this one. It's just as many as you can knit. Like I said, set a goal if you want. There are so many people chatting away in the chatter thread. Do you guys hear Chloe? They're probably going to start wrestling around. Um, there are so many people that have set goals and so many people chattering away. And it is so fun to see them starting their socks, the progress they're making on their socks, to just get to chat with everybody. I am really loving the activity that is going on in the group right now. So if you have not joined the Ravelry group, head over there and do that and share what you're working on and join in all of the knit alongs. Um, but yes, for that, it started January 1st. No whips allowed for this one. It has to be socks that you started January 1st or after. Their FO thread is open. I do believe we have one entry so far already in the FO thread. For that, you need to post a completed pair of socks. It cannot be just a single sock. It has to be a completed pair. You will post a picture of that, and I want you to number them accordingly to what pair you are on for the year. Um, if you don't do that, that's not a huge deal. That's just for the benefit of there may be some special prizes awarded to the people that knit the most pairs of socks within the year. Um, that would obviously come at the end of this year. So it's just for the benefit of that to make it easier to see how many socks you have knit within this year. Um, so just number them, like if it's your first pair, pair number one, fifth pair, pair number five, just number them like that if you could. So we can we can see who does the most. I think that would be super fun to do kind of a, a grand prize, if you will, at the end of the year. For prizes for this, we have had one prize donation so far, and that is Jenny from Mountain State Stitches on Etsy and Instagram. You can find her both places as Mountain State Stitches. Um, she has donated a bag for every three month prize that is done throughout the year. How that will work, it will be a winner's choice. The winner, whoever, you know, gets drawn for that specific prize will get to go to her Etsy shop um, or, you know, chat with her and pick a bag that she has available for your prize and then she will mail that out to you. So the first prize drawing for that will be, let's see, January, February, March, first podcast in April, let's say. I will draw for entries that have been posted within those three month you know, that three month time period. Next up, we have the Selfish Cow. That is any item that you make for yourself. Treat yourself here, guys, do some selfish knitting. I am so enjoying selfish knitting and a little gift knitting. <laughs> the, the first part of this year, the first few days of this year. Um, yeah, we'll get into that later. I just cannot seem to do all selfish knitting. I, there's always someone I wanna knit for. But yes, we'll get into that in whips. So Selfish Cow, anything you make for yourself, you do have to be making it for yourself for it to count. It started January 1st, ends March 31st. Whips are allowed for this one. I just ask that it's something that you do have still, um, still have a significant amount to do within the time period of this knit along. You know, be fair, Scout's Honor here that, you know, it's something that you still have an amount to work on. Um... Prizes are listed in the chatter thread for this one. We do have a good amount of prizes and we have had some new prizes come in. The wonderful Tammy Gore pattern designer has donated two prizes, two patterns from her Ravelry store. And the first one is the Venture Shawl. I will insert a picture here. She's donated that as well as the Leia shawl, which is a new release and it has yet to come out. It comes out this week, I believe. So as soon as I will, I've already posted that she's donated those and a link to the venture. Um, the Leia shawl, as soon as it is up, I will post a link to that one as well. So thank you so much, Tammy, for donating those prizes. I really appreciate it. And now that is it for the current cows that we have going on. Upcoming. We do have a cow that is upcoming that all of my Whovians will be super excited about. I know that I am. I am going to be co-hosting the Tiny Wimey Knit Along with Meg from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. And that will start on February 2nd. And we have not hashed out a an end date for that, but I am thinking it'll probably be February and March. Or February into March, a little over a month, I think, two months. We'll see. That will be 
information will get to you as soon as we've figured all of the details out. But for that, it is anything Doctor Who related, anything, pattern, yarn, anything that you can relate to Doctor Who and you can convince us is Doctor Who related, it will count. And I am very excited about this. I am not sure exactly what I'm going to make yet. Um, you'll see in whips that I'm doing some TARDIS socks for my husband and I am thinking I may have to have a pair myself. Not may, I, I need a pair myself. If, <laughs> that's horrible to say, but if I had not told him they were for his birthday, I might just keep these for myself because they are awesome. But I know I'm not going to mind doing the pattern again because it is a lot of fun. I made so much progress on his sock yesterday, but I'm getting ahead of the schedule here. We will talk about that in whips. So yes, the timey wimey cow. Very, very excited about this. So I think that's it. For admin stuff, guys, we're done with admin stuff. So I'm going to get everything out to show you for FOs and we'll be right back. Okay, are you guys ready for finished objects? I have quite a few surprisingly to show you guys today. Um, first, I'm just drinking some tea today. This is Bigelow I Love Lemon with a Vitamin C. I have been on a lemon kick today especially and this mug I've got to show you guys this. If you're a Whovian, you will get the reference. My River Song mug that Eric ordered me. I think he got this off of Amazon if anyone is interested. I've seen some on Etsy as well. Um, I love this mug. Finished objects. Do you guys see what my first one is? Can you tell? If you've been watching for a while, you follow me on Instagram, you know that I finished my Bloomsbury sweater. I'm going to move my chair back and stand up so I can give you guys a little bit of a full view. I have to kind of crouch down, I guess. So here's the front with the lace sleeves and they are just lace on the front. The lace continues down from here and goes all the way down the front of the sleeves kind of turn to give you a view of the back. The lace goes all the way down and I absolutely love it. So I finished this January 1st. My first finished object. <laughs> Obviously I've been working on it for a while. I think I started it in August, I believe. So it has definitely been an ongoing project. I absolutely love it. I am so happy with the finished object. Um, I love everything about it. I was concerned. The dogs are going nuts back here. They're just pacing around. <laughs> um, I was concerned about the neckline. I talked about it before. I was worried that it was too long, that it would ride too high. When I got the sleeves done, it just kind of seemed to pull the neckline into place when I tried it on because I originally I had thought maybe I would go back, take the cast on out, take a few rows out and shorten it a little bit. Um, I did not have to do that because like I said, when I got the sleeves done, I tried it on, it just seemed to pull it down to where it just fits perfect. You guys go lay down, lay down. Crazy dogs today, as usual. My husband is on day shift, if you can't tell, because that is when the dogs are crazy, when he's on day shift. And I podcast, they get very wound up. But yes, this fits great. The fit is perfect. The, it had some decreases, um, some waist shaping, and that worked out perfect. The decreases in the arm worked out perfect. I am obviously wearing a white long sleeve shirt under it. That is mainly, like the sweater is thick enough without this under it. Um, it's not for warmth, like the sweater is warm enough. It is mainly just because, I guess I'm just very conservative in the fact that I had it on with a tank top originally, but that was just showing too much of my back, I guess. I don't know. So I liked it with a long sleeve shirt under it so that the lace just wasn't showing too much. Not that it was really showing any important bits, but 
I don't know that's just the way I dress that I like to have things covered I guess <laughs> but anyways so I've got it with a long sleeve shirt under it and it is very warm we will see if I make it through the entire podcast without having to do a costume change because it is a little warm I thought about opening the windows but if the jets start flying over there will be way too much outside noise especially with the camera right by the windows <laughs> so I may just have to go change in a bit but let's see was there anything else I wanted to say about the sweater itself um, the pattern I followed it to a T I made no changes hey lay down I made no changes <laughs> she's crazy I made no changes from what the pattern said to do none I did it exactly like it said Lady. This is crazy, Chloe. She has the energy of like a six month old puppy, I think. And she's three, four. I'm blanking right now on exactly how old she is. Um, but she's crazy. Not really. She's just high energy most of the time. <laughs> but yes. I did it exactly how the pattern was written. I made no changes and it fits perfect. So I'm very, very happy with it. The yarn that I used, I'm gonna lean down real quick, was Cascade 220. It is an Erin weight sweater. Um, I think where I was going earlier as well with the, the white shirt is not for warmth. This is an Erin weight sweater. If I were to do this again, I would do a worsted weight sweater. Um, just because we do live in North Carolina and it does, you know, I'm cold all the time anyways, <laughs> and it is going to be colder here, but I don't think it's gonna be cold enough for this to be worn a lot. If this is going to be for the colder days or for special occasions, or different things and Chloe is probably driving you guys nuts right now because she's driving me nuts hopefully she will chill out a bit sorry about the dogs but yes this is an Aaron weight the pattern I think says worsted weight don't ask me why I got an Aaron weight I think I was looking through projects and someone had done one and I liked it I honestly cannot remember that far back what my specific thought process was with getting the Aaron Wade yarn. But I love the sweater, don't get me wrong, I love the sweater, I love the weight of the yarn, but like I said, it will be for those colder days or a special occasion, um, something where we're gonna be outside maybe. It'll definitely just not be something, unless it is a super cold day, that I you know, chill out around the house in because I think I will overheat. But I love it and I wouldn't mind doing the pattern again at all, but if I did, I would do it worsted weight and then it would be something that I could wear more often. The yarn that I used, like I said, was Cascade 220 Superwash. The collar number is 802. When I put that in on Ravelry, it came up as Green Apple. Just your basic Cascade. And I love the collar. I was worried about that as well, but I think it, it worked out nice. I really like it. Okay. I think, oh, I did wanna show you guys I overbought, obviously, because I still have this much left. What did I do? This was my first adult sized sweater. I've done a sweater for my niece. I've done a sweater for Wyatt. Um, this was the first one that I started for an adult <laughs> for myself. I obviously bought extra because I think I was afraid I was going to run out and not have enough. Something would happen. Something would go wrong. So I bought extra and now I have all of this. So I think what I'm going to do with this, and I still don't even think that we use up all of it is I'm going to do a scarf for Austin. And I think I will take a bit. I might actually just put this whole bit right here in. I have a big glass almost like a big cookie jar up on top of my hutch. And right now it's empty. I usually try to decorate it for different seasons, but it's empty right now because we just took our Christmas decorations down on January 1st. 
Speaking of, does anyone else wait till January 1st to take theirs down? I know some people take them down early. Some people leave them up even longer. I was always taught by my nanny that if you took your Christmas decorations down before January 1st, it was bad luck. So you had to wait until January 1st. You could not take them down before the new year because it was bad luck. You would have a bad year. That is always, for some reason, just stuck with me. So now I'm like, we have to wait. We cannot take them down. It's bad luck. Just, it's funny the things that stick with you from your childhood and that is definitely something that has. And I think my nanny would be very proud that I wait. But I think what I'm gonna do with this, the glass jar that's up there, I'm going to take this and pop it in there and I'm gonna to try to do that with scrappy bits or just leftovers from garments, especially. Because the reason being, what if I get a hole in this? I don't wanna go out and buy an entire other skein of yarn to just fix a hole or a snag, you know, whatever could happen. Um, I don't wanna to have to go buy another one. So I think I will pop this in there or some of it. You know, I'll probably do his scarf and see how much I use up and definitely put some up in there and try to do that with garments going forward. That way I have the yarn to fix any problems that may arise and I'm not scrambling to try to find a yarn if it, you know, ends up being discontinued or whatever the case may be. I think that would probably be a good idea. So I'll probably end up doing that and make him, I think, just a basic garter stitch scarf. I doubt he will want anything more than that, um, but he has mentioned that he wanted a scarf and his favorite color is green. So I think I will go with this and make him a scarf. So I will have to start that here soon so he can enjoy it while we have some cold weather. So that is my first FO and it's a big one and I love it and I'm so excited that it is done. And so many people have said they wanted to do this sweater, do it. You will love it, you will not regret it. Next FO, let's go down the list. Okay, I have got a stack here. Christmas socks. They were not done by Christmas. If you <laughs> follow me on Instagram, you know that. I will insert a picture of the funny little thing that I did to show that Christmas socks were not gonna be done. I, leading up to, I thought it would be fun to do a progress shot because I was just going to hammer all these socks out and get them done. I started to drive myself crazy with it and I thought, why am I doing this? Enjoy the time with your kids. They're not going to remember, I mean, they might and hopefully they will remember, you know, the, the socks that I make them over the years, especially the special, you know, holiday ones or ones that they picked the yarn out. You know, you hope that your kids will remember that, but you also, you know, it's more important that they remember the time that you spend with them. So I thought, why am I scrambling to get these done? And I was working on them while we were playing. It's not like I, I sit in it and tell my kids to get away from me or anything. I would work on them while we were playing games or, you know, sitting and, and watching TV, you know, whatever the case may be, I, I knit while we do things all the time. So I was doing that, but I was also kind of becoming frantic about wanting to have them done. So I thought, forget about it. They're not getting done. There is just no way unless I lose sleep, I get up super early, I stay up super late, I avoid doing some things with the kids that these are gonna get done. And I just felt like it was more important, obviously, to spend time with them and enjoy their break more and enjoy the days leading up to Christmas more and worry less about this stack of gorgeous socks. So that is what I did and they were not done by Christmas, but it was fine and they did not seem to care that they were gonna get them later. But the progress shots that I was doing up until Christmas of the socks, um, Christmas Eve, I posted a progress shot and I will insert it here. And as you can see, it was just a funny little play. And it was actually my friend Karen that is in my Friday morning knitting group. It was her idea to do something funny like that with the undone socks. So <laughs> we had a little fun with that. And Austin, as you can tell from his face, enjoyed it the most, I think. Eric and Wyatt just kind of played along and, and jumped in there. <laughs> but it was cute. And I thought it was just a, a fun little thing to do. 
progress shot of unfinished socks, but they did eventually get done. Um, they have all the Austins. He's been a naughty little thing and he has not worn his yet, but the rest of them have been worn and washed. So they are not the prettiest things. And while I was talking, I should have been putting them on blockers. I will just put one of each pair. I will not put an entire pair on blockers. And there's Chloe here on Eric's. And Eric's foot is so big that it does not fit my blocker. I obviously need to get some different sizes. But this was Eric's. This is Desert Vista Dye Works. You're a mean one. And I had a ton of fun doing this. This was the very first time. I've got a few skeins of Desert Vista Dye Works. But this was the first time I've actually knit with it. And I really enjoyed it. His I just did cuff down. Um, for all of these, they were cuffed down and it was just my standard sock recipe. I did not follow a specific pattern other than the heel is fish lips kiss heel. So 20 rows is what I usually do for an adult size sock for the cuff. Um, I did 70 some for the leg. I believe everything, if you are interested in specifics on the socks is in my projects page on Ravelry. Ravelry. <laughs> I have been so good and I'm pretty proud of myself for being so good and keeping that up as well as I have. So you can check on there. Everything is in there. All of the notes. I've been trying to put specific um, row counts, stitch counts for my benefit, you know, so that I remember the best fitting socks what I did. Now the toe, I did swipe from Hermione's Everyday Socks. I love that toe. It's just a basic rounded toe. So I did do that. Fish lips kiss heel, like I said, 2.25 millimeter, cast on 64 stitches. That is those. They are awesome. And like I said, he has already worn them. The day they were, maybe not the day his were done. His were done. Um, but the day that I said he could have them, after I took a picture of them all together, he he wore them that day. He loves his hand knit socks, which I absolutely love. I have converted. This next pair is mine. And this is Gnome Acres To Be Jolly. Same thing for this, 64 stitches, 2.25 millimeter, 20 rows for the cuff, fish lips, kiss heel, and Hermione Stowe. And I love them. They fit great. This was my first time I've had minis of their yarn to put in my blanket. I had some Halloween ones and I have some Christmas ones as well. But this is the first time that I have done like an actual project with their yarn. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So that is mine. And next I will show you Austin's. His kind of fit on the blockers, but I just won't even mess with it. Um, these are Austin's. This is the Cozy Knitter Holly Jolly and it's the striped and then it came with the red for the contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. For Austin's, I cast on 60 stitches. That's what works for his, his foot and his leg, his ankle. And his I did a little bit longer than I normally do and I could have actually done the leg even longer. He wanted them longer since they're striping. Um, he thought that would be fun. So yes, those are his same thing, fish lips, kiss heel, Hermione's toe. And then we have little Wyatt's. And this is Mothy and the Squid, their striped candy cane. This was my first time working with their yarn and it was nice to work with. It is a thinner fingering weight. Um, so you do want to be mindful of that with stitch counts. For Wyatt's, I normally do 56 and it did work, but I wish I would have just went ahead and probably went up to 60. It might have been just a tiny bit baggy on him right now, but then he probably could have worn them next year as long as, you know, the length of his foot did not change too drastically. Drastically. <laughs> but yes, he loves them. He's already worn them. They've already been washed. And I'm just remembering, I forgot to bring an FO in here, so I will have to pause and grab that here in a minute, but I'll just go th ahead through the rest of them. Um, next up, these have been worn and not washed, so they are a little stretched out right now. But next up, I have a languishing whip that I found. I was going through my whip basket, kind of cleaning it out after Christmas socks, cleaning out project bags, putting them away, and I discovered a lone sock. 
it was all alone in the bottom and when I went to my projects page I noticed it had been started in July and it was just hanging out just chilling so I thought I should probably finish it so these are Rose City Rollers so I started this one when did I start it on January 1st maybe I think after I finished my sweater and then I had it done within a few days I'm pretty sure that's when I started it um, so the second one took no time at all I love the Rose City Rollers pattern it did remind me because since I had done the first one on DPNs I thought I'm gonna do the second one on DPNs just to avoid any you know I don't know different tension sometimes with different needles I know that I have so I didn't want to to have them be too drastically different so I did DPNs and then I was reminded guys it's a gusset and a heel flap I was reminded with this second sock how much I love DPNs yes you heard me right I think I love DPNs and a good old gusset and a heel flap I love fish lips kiss heel do not get me wrong nothing wrong with them at all but I was just reminded how much I love a gusset and heel flap and then when I put these on I was reminded how much I love the fit of a gusset and a heel flap I do like the fit of fish lips kiss heel but I'm kind of thinking the more I think about it my best fitting socks gusset and heel flap so I may start doing that on future socks here coming up and then just kind of compare the two more on which ones you know I like better I don't know I just like to go back and forth I like to keep it interesting and not get bored with one way of doing socks um, whether it be magic loop or DPNs or nine inch circulars um, and the construction as well I which I you know toe up cuff down there are so many different ways you can do it I think and I don't know, am I the only one who just likes the variety of switching back and forth? I'm kind of thinking that's what the deal is. I've been doing fish lips kiss heel for a while. I did this and now I'm thinking I want to do this for a while, which there's nothing wrong with that. It does keep it interesting and gives you a variety since I love making socks so much, obviously, um, it'll just kind of keep me from getting bored with it, I guess. But I do want to talk to you about the yarn for these socks. But I did not bring over the label so let me grab that okay I'm back as you can see obviously I had a little bit of a costume change because that sweater is very very toasty it keeps you very warm okay I'm awful and I cannot find the label but I do have a fairly decent amount of that yarn so I just grabbed another one so I can show you the label this is what I had left so a fairly good amount left of this <laughs> but I could probably get another pair of Rose City rollers out of this so maybe I'll do that for one of my sisters or something but the yarn I want to say it was 865 or 856 was the colorway number and on the website when I looked it up the colorway name is frozen and this is what the label looks like it is called toe footsies it has I don't know how you pronounce this c-h-i-t-i-n and it says on the label that is fiber from shrimp and crab shells and it's naturally antibacterial it's 50% superwash wool 25% soy silk fibers 22.5% of cotton and 2.5% of whatever that word is um, it's 100 grams machine washable and dry um, now this colorway is 848, the one that I'm going to show you. I don't know what the name is, but that's the number on it. But here is this. I hope that is showing up and not looking horrible. And this yarn, I came across this when we lived in Yuma. I had purchased some there. I'm not from a store there because there isn't one, but long story I had purchased them there um, and I really liked it the first part I did was a pair of socks for Wyatt the yarn is a very thin fingering weight I do not know if that will if you can tell at all you know but it is a thinner fingering weight it's not a plump yarn 
but it is great for a lightweight sock. These will be perfect for summer. You know, in summer you don't really want to wear a thick wool sock. They are breathable and my boys wear them all year round. Um, I don't normally even wear socks in the summer unless I have my tennis shoes on, but these I think I will wear in the summer, you know, with my tennis shoes on when we're out running around or whatever. It won't be too thick of a sock. Very breathable. When I wore them the other day, my feet did not get toasty warm or anything. Um, so definitely not something you would want if you're wanting, not that they won't keep your feet warm, but they are going to be a lighter weight, more breathable sock, I believe. I don't know that everyone would like working with this yarn because like I said, it is a thinner, it's not a plump yarn. It's not, it's not that it's scratchy, but it's not super, super soft, but it does feel extremely durable. And Wyatt's socks, I made those when we lived in Arizona, so towards the beginning of 2016, the first half of the year. Anyway, sometime within there, um, his socks still look amazing in this yarn. Look like I just made them. They're not, his socks are not pilling at all. Nothing. They look great. So I have, I had found this on sale. It's by Southwest Trading Company. And I think that's actually the website I found this on sale at. So if you're interested, that would be my first place to tell you to go check because I got a very good deal for this yarn. And it is 100 grams in one skein. And with rollers, look how much I had left. And I'm a size nine, so I have pretty big feet. But I would definitely, you know, give this a try, especially if you want some socks that might be thinner that you might wear in the summer or if you don't like thicker socks you know and you're just wanting them for all year round something thinner definitely give it a try they have some super fun colorways this is just one of the ones that i have i got some girly ones and some boyish ones because like i said why loves his socks i have not made austin or eric a pair out of this yarn but that is definitely in the future this year hopefully to get them some socks so i definitely would recommend just giving it a try just order one if you're not sure order one give it a try you might love it i like it all right next fo is a super fun one um it's another one that if you follow me on instagram you've you've seen all of these probably but you saw me frantically trying to finish wyatt's other christmas present or his one hand knit christmas present obviously he got more than that but um Everyone got something hand knit and his hand knit thing, he has been after me since we moved here. Every time we go into Weaver's Web in New Bern, North Carolina, the local yarn store there, they have a stuffed bunny sitting there by the register and he has wanted that bunny since the first time he went in that store. I've just kind of put it off and for no really specific reason, I guess, um, I just put it off. And then the closer we got to Christmas, I thought that'll be a great Christmas present for him perfect and then i just put it off with all the other gift knitting i kept thinking oh i'll have time to get it done and then when i decided not to finish the socks i thought i've got to finish his christmas present so i started it it might have been the day before christmas eve actually it was because it was that friday morning yeah and i finished it christmas eve at like 11 15 11 30 ish i think and it was funny because I had been frantically working on it. He had been home, but I managed to keep it a complete secret. He had no idea what I was working on. He knew I was knitting something for him because I was like, don't look, don't look. And it was cute. When, when I got to the point, let me show you first so I can talk to you about the specifics. I would like to introduce you to Bunny Boy. Bunny Boy's ear is in his face. This is Bunny Boy. He has no tail, as you can see. I'd, I'll tell you why in a minute, but um, yes, this is Bunny Boy. This is the Opal Sock Yarn Bunny pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Great pattern. It is worked, you start with the head, so it's kind of top down, I guess, and it's seamless. You, you do the head and then you pick up stitches as you go um, I won't give the details away because it is a paid for pattern. So it's seamless. You don't do everything separate and then have to seam it all together at the end. Perfect. 
and I think that helped with time because I think if I had knit all of the separate things and then come Christmas Eve I had to piece them all together I don't know that it would have happened to tell you the truth but it was so nice to just work it top down Chloe's on the move again is it driving anybody else nuts it's driving me nuts okay but what I was saying I got the head done I could work on that no problem he had no clue kind of once I got the head done I was like he's not gonna know once I got the ears on and started on the body I'm like he's going to know what I'm working on like <laughs> It's obvious, you know, once you get down to here and you've got a bunny head with ears, that you're working on a bunny. So I'm working on it one day. It was probably Christmas Eve that morning or the day before. I can't remember to tell you the truth. But he came in the room and Chloe's coming to say hi, apparently. He came in the room and I was like, hey, Wyatt, you know, come, come sit over here with me, but just don't, don't look. His face. <laughs> He was like, but I will. <laughs> it was so, it was just cute. I think you had to be there. But the kid is so honest, he cannot tell a lie. Um, so it was funny to see him, but I will. So I managed to get it done. Everybody was in bed by that point. Um, Eric was still awake, but he was in bed reading. I'm the only one awake, and I'm like, I am not wrapping this for one all the wrapping paper the bags everything was put away I'm like I'm not gonna go drag that out I didn't want to wake everybody up dragging everything out be loud make a mess I was just ready to go to bed at that point so he did not get wrapped he did not get put in a bag I just put him like up in the tree right above it was just the bottom of the tree right above where the presents are and I thought he'll see it you know he'll probably see it before I'm even in the room on Christmas morning but he did not. He was too focused on the presents under the tree. So it took him a bit, but right before, or they may have opened one present already, I cannot remember, but he just looked, happened to look up into the tree. The look on his face made every single stitch of Bunny Boy, you know, the late Christmas Eve night, totally worth it because he was shocked. And he just immediately knew what it was, who it was from, ran over grabbed bunny boy ran over gave me a hug thank you thank you thank you totally worth it it was the best reaction i think to anything i've ever knitted anybody so it was great and he loves bunny boy and i did this out of cascade yarns heritage 150 prints 75 percent superwash merino wool and 25 percent nylon and the 150 it is a 150 gram ball so after bunny boy I should have weighed this to see how much I have left I'll probably do that later but um that is what is left still pretty big so Wyatt has requested first out of this he would like a bunny boy junior we've got bunny boy we need a bunny boy junior which there is a I think it's like mini sock yarn bunny or something by Susan B Anderson same pattern just a smaller bunny so he wants Bunny Boy Jr. And then if there is anything left, he would like some socks to match his bunnies. So that is what I will be doing with this. Eventually, it's not top of the list at the moment, but it will get done for him. Because he is just, his reactions, I was just talking about this yesterday um, with my husband. You know, I'll show the boys and Eric things and they'll be like, oh, that looks nice. Cool. Yeah, you know, whatever their reaction may be, but it, why it's reactions, when I show him anything that I'm making, uh, he, or that I've made him or anyone else, it doesn't matter, just anything that I'm making, his reactions are the best. He's like, awesome, oh, I love that, that's cool. He just gets so excited about everything. I love that kid's spirit and energy. So he's extremely knit worthy just because his reactions are the best and bunny boy has slept with him every night let's see what is that all of the fo's that was actually quite a bit considering you know oh i still have one more to show you i did a hat for eric maybe i won't show it this time i'll just show it next time we've done quite a bit of fo's so that is it for fo's i'm going to clean up from this and then show you all of the whips because what do you do when you finish all the Christmas socks, the sock yarn bunny, and these, and a sweater? What do you do?
Let me tell you what you do. You cast on all of the things that you've been wanting to cast on. All of them. Almost. I still have a few more things that are not cast on, which is probably even worse. You cast on so many things. That's what you do. So I will be right back with all of the whips. I'm back with all the whips. I had the bags sitting up here, but it was kind of distracting. So they're on the floor. So I apologize in advance for the reaching to grab them. First up, I'm going to show you something you've seen before. Um, there is more of it now to see. And this is in, this was a gift from Molly of Molly Klein Design. And I absolutely love it. Obviously, I love fabric. And this bag is very well made. I love how she makes her bags. Okay, so this is Austin's awesome sweater. The pattern that I'm using should have maybe been a bit more prepared to show you this kind of stuff, but I'm not. Okay, I think I can show you this. There's not even a good picture of this though. This pattern, they're really, that is the one thing I'm not, I love the pattern so far, but there are no good pictures on the pattern of what the sweater looks like at all. Um, here is the pattern. You can kind of see the back there. Obviously it's on a baby, but the sizes for this um, go from six months to adult extra large. So it has a very nice variety of sizes. I shouldn't have even pulled that out since there's not a good picture of it, but it is a cardigan, a button up cardigan. Kind of when I look at it, it reminds me of like a grandpa-ish cardigan. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I am doing the size 10 year for Austin. So, let me show you what I got. First, let me show you the yarns that I'm using. He picked out the colors. It is Cascade 220, kind of a theme today. A lot of Cascade 220 being used. I really like it. I don't have any complaints about it. Um, I have heard that it pills, we'll see. I haven't really used a lot of the items so far that have been made from it, so we shall see. But I really like it. Um, I believe this is chocolate is the colorway for this, and it is number 819. And then we have a green. I'm not sure the colorway on this, but it is pretty similar to my sweater. And it is 81 or 841 is the color number for this one. So these are the two that he picked: green and brown. And so far. I love my progress keeper on here so you can see where I was the last time I showed it. And this is what I've got so far. Let me take it out of the needle, needle cozy. There we go. I am separated for the sleeves. What will be the best way to show you this? I'm separated for the sleeves and continuing the body. So that is where I was last time. And that is a progress keeper, is it upside down? No, from Melissa of Nitty by Nature, the Tootsie Pop, and it is totally adorable. And Austin loves those, so it's perfect for his sweater. But that's where I am. Now I'll come back at the end. Um, as you can see, the top is rolling down. There is a band, kind of a collar, a folded collar that you come back and add on. So I will do that later when it tells me to. But this is what I've got so far, and I'm really liking it. I did try it on him once I separated for the sleeves, and I think it fits pretty well. Um, he said he thought, it, you know, it fit him pretty good. I was a little concerned about the front. They're rolled right now, but I was concerned that they didn't come in far enough, but I forgot about the band. So I think the band will cover that, hopefully. And I'm sure it will grow some once it's worn and, and washed and all of that good stuff. So I think it'll be good. And hopefully it'll be done before it starts getting hot. I would like him to actually wear it before he grows out of it. The kid grows like you would not believe. And I, I'm going to, the measurements for the 10 year work fine for, for him. Um, I measured him, you know, compared it to the schematic of the sweater. All right, next up, I'm going to show you some socks. And these are another leftover whip from last year that I would like to finish soon. And I want to show you this bag. I purchased this bag from Bags She Built, which is Tracy. And Tracy was great to work with. I had seen this fabric. Let me show you the fabric first. 
it's just kind of like a farmhouse it rem obviously I mean I don't know that it's necessarily like an Amish country fabric but that is definitely what it reminds me of especially um, being from you know the area of the country where I'm from we have a lot of Amish not directly local to us but that's one of the things to do where I'm from you know you travel to the Amish country and spend the day at the Amish country so this is just a fun fabric and that's what it reminds me of and I love reading stories and watching things on the Amish it just it's very fascinating to me the life that they live um so I love this fabric but anyways I saw this on Definit's podcast the fabric and I had to have it so I contacted Tracy or I think she may have contacted me first and said that she had some left I can't remember which way it went but regardless she had some left and I got a bag and this is um, I'm not sure if she has specific names for her bag, but I believe it's just the sock size bag. Love this size. Absolutely perfect. I took it yesterday when the boys had a dentist appointment and it fit down in my purse. It's just perfect for a sock and it's very squeezable. You know, you can put it down in your purse, shaking around. I've got some notions in there and I love this little bit. Look at this. I don't know how well you can see that. But the zipper pull is a button. I love that. I really, really like that. Okay. So these socks you have seen before. This is my Legacy Fiber Arts Winnie Sanderson yarn. So you've seen this before. And last time you saw this, I was doing two at a time socks. As you can see now, I'm only doing one at a time. Um, I was doing the button trick that Connie from Chili Knits has started just a whirlwind with. And I love the button trick, but the thing is, it has nothing to do with the button trick. The button trick works. Um, if you are hesitant to try it, give it a try because I do think it works and it works great. If you're not aware of what that is, you put up, you can take the yarn coming from the outside, like it is here, of your cake and center pull. You put this through one hole of the button, the center through the other hole of the button, and it just keeps the yarn from getting a tangled, twisted, crazy mess. Um, I did have a little twisting, but I think that was mostly my fault, probably. Um, so yes, the button trick does work. If you're, you're wondering, I do think it works. But two at a time socks. I love doing two at a time. There is, I don't really have a second sock syndrome other than the one that I found languishing at the bottom of the basket <laughs> from July, which I think just got forgotten about to tell you the truth it wasn't like a specific oh I don't want to cast that on it just got overwhelmed and stuff piled on it but two at a time socks I love them I will continue doing two at a time I do believe I'm kind of a two at a time convert and that I will continue doing them but I don't think I will be two at a time only for socks Two at a time is great. And I know people that travel with two at a time, they work on two at a time all the time. But for me, I am always hesitant when I'm doing two at a time, say like yesterday when I, the kids had a dentist appointment and I took socks to work on. I, you know, appointments or just to grab a sock and take it to the kitchen to work on while I'm making dinner or whatever the case may be. I find that I like to work on single socks more than two at a time socks in those instances. I think it's easier just to grab it, work on and put it down if it's one, you know, just one at a time versus two at a time where you've got to, you know, worry about your yarn management. And maybe I just haven't been doing two at a time long enough to be as comfortable with it. So maybe that will come in time, but I, I cut the yarn for both of these and just put them each on separate needles so that I can do them just single one at a time socks. So this one is just kind of hanging out in here. There has been no progress on it since I cut it. This it's the same spot that I was last time I showed it. Um, so that's where I am with the one. I haven't touched it. You can see where I cut, cut the yarn just to make it so I could take it to the dentist yesterday. And I have something that I could just work on around the house when I don't want to worry about yarn management and so forth with two at a time. I have my Winnie Sanderson Progress Keeper on there. 
That is from Pandia's Jewels. And the other one is the one that I did work on and it is ready for a heel. I need to measure it again just to make sure because I measured it while Wyatt was getting his teeth cleaned yesterday. So I wanna double check on that just to make sure I am at the heel point, but it looks about right. And I have my Sarah Sanderson Progress Keeper on that one. And those, and I also have another one. Um, I have the set, the three Sanderson sisters. Those are from Pandia's Jewels and I love them. They are just so fun. She has such fun um, character Progress Keepers. So yes, this is a Blueberry Waffles sock pattern, which I had someone ask me the other day, if you go look at the Blueberry Waffles, I believe it's either for like a sport or a DK weight yarn. Don't worry about that. Use your stitch count, you know, as long as it'll add up to equal, you know, to be divisible by, I don't really know what I'm saying right now, as long as I do 64 stitches. That works out fine across the front for the Blueberry Waffles. Um, then obviously on the back of the toe, I have not done it. And I don't know that I will on the back of the leg. I may just pull Amina Phillips and do it on the front of the leg. We shall see as I get past the heel. But that is where I am at with those. Yeah, I, I love the yarn. I'm not really in a toe up mood right now. So I'm kind of eh about the fact that they're toe up. But there's something that I, I could take to the dentist with me yesterday and, and get some work done on. My DPN cozies that I have right here, this is from Mountain State Stitches. It is obviously Halloween, but I have some Halloween ones. I have Christmas. I don't have that many of just other ones and those were all taken. So <laughs> I've got two Halloween ones actually. This is one that I made and then one from Mountain State Stitches. But that's where I'm at with these. They're getting there, they will get there. Um, and I could have, I thought, you know, just start another pair of socks. Obviously I totally could have, but I'm waiting on some yarn to get here and I thought I would be good and not, because the yarn I'm waiting on to get here is for some socks, which I'll talk about later. But I'm waiting on it to get here and I thought, don't be too bad, don't start another project when you have socks right here that you can work on. I'm trying to behave. I'm trying so hard. Okay. That all I wanted to talk about with those. I think so, 2.25 millimeter. You guys should know my standard sock by now. It doesn't seem to change, <laughs> but it will on this next one because on the next one I'm not using 2.25 millimeter. And I will tell you why. Okay, this is in my Doctor Who bag that I got on Etsy. I'll put the name of the shop down here. And I have my Dalek, Dalek. He's so cute. Um, and I ordered this from Mustache Yarn, I believe. I think, yes. Okay, so in here, I have Eric's birthday present. Sit right there. Let me show you the pattern first. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And my printer was running out of ink a little bit when I printed this, so it's not the best picture. And I think I've showed this to you before, but this is the Police Box Socks by Audrey Nicklin. Like I said, free pattern, totally worth it. I'm really enjoying it. But what she has you do, let me pull up. There are two sizes, a small and a large. You are working on a size zero, two millimeter needle. I'm using high, high sharps because I love them. So I'm doing a large size. These are for Eric. What she has you do, you start out, and I'm not giving anything away because like I said, this is a free pattern. Um, you start out 72 stitches for the large. You pull it out and show you, and I will kind of walk you through what she does and, and what the pattern says about why she does it that way. I did, when did I do the cuff for this? The day before yesterday, and then the rest was done yesterday. I think I did the cuff the day before yesterday. But anyways, I did the cuff one day and then I thought, I'm not gonna do any more because Eric will see it and he was home. So I just did the cuff. And then 
I did a little bit yesterday while he was at work and he came home about 3 30 and I was like I don't want to stop working on it so I'm just going to show him what it is <laughs> and I was so excited so it was partly selfish reasons because I didn't want to stop working on it and I knew he would know what it was and I was just so stinking excited to show it to him so he is very excited that he's going to get these this is where I am and I'm loving it now there are mistakes this is only my second attempt at color work I did the sheep balls ornament um and I've showed that last time I think or the time before but this is only my second attempt so while it is not perfect I am still learning things I did the police box section here yesterday and then I went back and took it out because the B on both sides I did this I left out the middle line on the B I don't know what happened but there was that and I think I had done it too tight some of the stitches were really pulled to where if it was just sitting like this they were a bit distorted so I tried it on my leg and it was really distorted so I, I just took that section out and redid it I thought you know there's a mistake on the B which I was going to work with and go back and try to stitch it in but then just seeing how distorted they were I thought nah let's just take it out and redo it so that I'll be happier with it and I definitely am now like I said there are mistakes and I am still learning um I think it's just something that'll come with time of working on my tension and different things with collar work but I'm really happy with it and he likes it I did have him try it on last night right when I was toward the bottom of the the white windows here and it it fit good and wasn't distorted I was just afraid it would be too tight but with saying that like I was saying she has you cast on 72 stitches for the cuff with the size zero needle and then you increase after the cuff I think you do a few rows and then increase um, but she has you increase up to I want to say 84 let me double check on that before I tell you something totally wrong 84 yes you increase to 84 stitches so the thought process behind that that she explains in the pattern is you know your collar work doesn't have as much stretch and obviously you know what will happen if you were not to increase with this I guess and I'm not saying this would necessarily happen but with me I guarantee it would since I'm new at collar work you do that and you don't increase those extra stitches you're really going to be distorted when it stretches out so or it just won't stretch as much so the thought process behind that is you increase to 84 stitches and it gives you more give room you know you don't have to worry about it stretching quite as much because you have more more room there obviously so I've done that the charts the first chart and I've decreased back down to 72 stitches and I'll continue with with that same amount throughout you know the remainder of the sock so that is how far I am and let me tell you these are all I've wanted to work on this is it I've only started the one I figured I'd just do one at a time but this is all I've wanted to work on it has been so much fun so far and I want a pair for myself I do so we will see but I really am enjoying it and I am kind of like why did you tell him <laughs> you should have kept it a surprise because that would have been such a good surprise and now I feel like I need to get him something else for his birthday so that he doesn't know what he's getting but he's excited and he said he didn't care so I was like are you mad that I ruined your birthday surprise he said no so there's that and the yarn that I'm using is I don't think I have the tag in here I might for one of them maybe it's in my little book um yes Nip Picks Stroll Fingering Sapphire Heather that is the blue that I'm using and then for the black and white it was just black and white that was the colorway names same Nip Picks Stroll Fingering and I'm trying so hard this year to be good about keeping notes I don't think you can see that it says be your best self and I am going to try to move notebooks around to different project bags and make sure I'm keeping notes to update my Ravelry with 
um, and I want to try to keep track of how many grams of yarn that I knit with this year. So that is another thing. I'm weighing my yarn and putting how many grams I start with, and then I'm going to weigh it and put how many I end with. Seems like a good idea, but the best laid plans, we all know how that can go. Okay, I have two more whips to show you. This one is in a present from Eric, Christmas present. Gilmore Girls, guys, I love it. Absolutely love it. And this is from, I wrote it down, Good Stuff Crafts on Etsy is where he got this. So I'm super happy with it. And I love, look at that, her little tassel zipper pull. I love it. Okay. This is the All About That Brioche Shawl. For this, I have so much stuff in here, guys. Sorry. This bag was like packed. Okay. For this, I'm using Lolo Did It yarn, um, her everyday sock, which is a fingering weight, obviously. And this is Blue Suede Shoes and Fame. So my thought process, these were originally for something else, um, for the three pips paired with Breakfast Club by Lolo. I totally changed my mind on that. I have other things in mind for three pips now. <laughs> just one of those things where I decided, eh, we're gonna do something else. So my thought process with these two together in this shawl is they are somewhat resemblant of West Virginia University, West Virginia Mountaineers, colorways or collars, colorways. Obviously, I have yarn on the brain. So kind of similar to that in a way, but without being like overly themed. But I really like these two colors together. So that's the colors that I'm using for this. I have not gotten extremely far on it. I am loving the knit so far, and I am very excited to get to the brioche section of this shawl. Let me see. I think the front page of the pattern has a pretty good picture without giving anything away. There's a picture of it and it starts out in one collar. Like say this is my navy that I'm, I'm starting out with. You do a whole section in that, then you do the brioche, and then you continue on in your second collar to do the second half. So that is where I'm on the first part. I haven't shown you where I am. I was gonna say that's where I am, but you haven't seen where I am yet. So I am on the first section, obviously, and I have not gotten very far. I haven't worked on it a ton, but it is not an intuitive pattern as of yet. If you've done this before, is it an intuitive pattern? Do you eventually just know? Like it's a, I won't give away too much, but there are a set number of rows that you have to repeat throughout this section. And so far it's not intuitive to me. I'm reading each row of the pattern every time I have to do it. It's not hard, you know, there is nothing hard about it, but it is just not intuitive. And I'm loving it, but it's not something I can just sit down and not think about while I'm working on. I have to pay attention. So this is how far I am. Like I said, I'm not that far yet compared to my next whip that I'm gonna show you, this one just seems like it's taking forever. So it's a good thing I am enjoying it. And I think the thing pushing me now is getting to that brioche, brioche section. I cannot wait to get to that section. So yes, and there is a brioche cow going on right now and it is being hosted by Tiffany from Knitting from the Mitten and Sarah from Dabbling Shepherdess Podcast. So I will probably be entering this into that if I can get it done. <laughs> I'm not in any rush with this. This isn't my selfish knitting. This is for me. Um, so I am not in any huge rush to get this done. I'm enjoying it. And I think that is the most important thing with the selfish cow. And I can't get prizes anyways, so. <laughs> for my own cow. But that's where I am. And I'm using my Haya Haya interchangeable sharps. And it's a US 4 3.5 millimeter is what I'm using. That's it for my brioche shawl. Eventually there will be some brioche to show there. 
and I have done brioche if you've watched I have a cow started I have not finished a brioche item I have a cow started um it'll get done sometime that was going to be my original item for their brioche cow but selfish knitting I just had to cast on something new okay my next one I am doing Mina Phillips um cozy schlanket mystery knit along I'm loving it by the way so this will kind of tie in with acquisitions a bit and I've already kind of mixed in acquisitions and didn't even think to tell you the bag from Tracy a bag she built was an acquisition so I went ahead and showed you that so I will not show it later in this bag let me show you that first um I've shown this before but this is from one sock wonder the little fancy reindeer so another acquisition that I will go ahead and show you the yarn that I'm using and if you have not heard of Mina's mystery knit along that's going on it just started on January 1st the pattern I believe right now it's four dollars until all clues are out and then it will go up to five dollars I believe that's correct so the first clue was released on January 1st the second clue if I'm not mistaken comes out on January 8th and then there will be two more clues following that I want to say the 15th and the 21st of January, but I could be wrong on that. So do not quote me on that. But the yarn that I'm using, it's a worsted weight shawl. Awesome, because it's going pretty fast so far. So I picked up some Malabrigo Rios. Let me pull them all. Oh no, I'm tangled on a paper clip. And I totally messed my cake up. Okay. These are my three collars. Um, starting over here, we have Sunset. In the middle is Primavera, I believe, yes. And the, this is Natural. So there they are, there are my collars. And I'm doing, this is my color A, this is my color B, and then this is my color C. And let's see, what else can I show you for that? I will say if you are doing it and you have not finished clue one or you want to go ahead and start and you don't want to know what the clues are, uh, I will let you know when I'm going to put it up and show it so that you don't see anything. But let me just say first, I am horrible at mystery knit alongs. This is the first one I've done, but I'm already saying I'm a failure because you want to know what I did before I started. Um, I had to wait. I didn't start... Like my goal originally was to start like first thing, January 1st, get up, get it started. But I couldn't wind my yarn first thing. I hadn't done it yet. The reason being, we still had our Christmas decorations up. So the table that I'm setting everything on right now, um, it was in the garage because this is where our Christmas tree was. So we had moved our dining room table out there. We have our kitchen table, but my yarn winder does not, there isn't a big enough ledge or lip you know whatever you want to call it on the table in the kitchen just put my ball winder on and then there is no good place to set my swift um without it being on the floor which i did that while the christmas tree was up and the cakes were just not as pretty it was just a mess so i was waiting until we put the christmas decorations up we brought the table back in to get my yarn winded so I didn't get started first thing in the morning, but I was thinking I had printed the clue, I had read through it, and I'm thinking, what do I want my color A to be? I'm reading through it and I'm knowing, okay, it's gonna do this, but which two do I wanna use for this, you know? Um, I may have went on Instagram and searched the hashtag with the specific thought of finding out what clue one looked like. That's kind of a failure, isn't it? I think so. You're supposed to be surprised it's supposed to be a mystery until you knit it up and see what it looks like but i could not do it i failed and i'm bad at spoilers tv shows if i don't get to watch it immediately i will read spoilers i cannot wait i just cannot do it spoilers yeah i'm bad okay so i'm gonna pull this up and i'm gonna show it so if you do not want to know look away. I will tell you when you can look back. Last chance. This is my clue one. And obviously you're working with colors A and B throughout, you know, for 
glue one. I don't want to give too much away if you're not looking. <laughs> I won't describe it too much. But those are the two colors you're using within this clue. And I am very happy with it. I cannot wait to see where she goes next with it. So, so far I'm absolutely loving it. I cannot wait for it to be done and to cozy up with it because my knitting chair is over here by these windows and it does, when it's a chilly day, it, my chair, that area of the house stays pretty cold because of all the windows. So I'm very excited. Okay, it's down, it's gone. If you were not looking, you can look. I won't show it anymore. But I'm very happy with it and I cannot wait. Um, I'm pretty sure the eighth is when the next clue comes out. So I cannot wait to see, like I said, where she goes with this next clue. Okay, I think that's it for whips. Next up, I will show Cozy Memories. All right, now since it is the first podcast of the month, I will update you on Cozy Memories progress. I've got it over here in my 31 basket that's overflowing with craziness. Um, so since the last time I showed it, I've only done seven new squares. I think that's like half of what I did you know, the progress I had the last time I showed it, I think I had quite a bit more than that. But Christmas knitting got in the way so much so that, look at this. These are my Christmas minis from No Makers. Uh, as you can see, I did one, two, three, I've done two out of this, none out of this. And those were not even put in before Christmas. Yeah, I had big plans. That was going to be Christmas Eve and Christmas Day working on the blanket, and it did not happen. But whatever, I love the yarn, and I'm putting them in as I go, and I'm, I'm still enjoying it. So let's show you the blanket. Look at that. Obviously, I have ends to weave in. I've done pretty good about keeping up with the ends, though. There's the back. So I'm really liking it. I'll show you. I have been doing good about marking my squares. If you're new and you're wondering why all the markers are just on some squares, I go through, like I showed it the first podcast of December. After that podcast, I took all the markers off. And then as I've added a new square, once the square is finished, I slip a marker on it so that I know next time I show it, how many squares I added without having to really think about it, I guess. Just an easy way to do it. So this was one of the minis out of the No Makers. This one was a no. I don't know which one this one was. I thought I had them in order. Under the tree. This was under the tree. So that's what this one was. Um, this was a mini from my friend Jenny, Mountain State Stitches. Um, these two, Austin's Christmas socks, my Christmas socks, this was eggnog out of the No Makers Christmas Party minis, um, Eric's Christmas socks, is that it, was that all seven? I guess that was it. Um, that's all I've added. And you will see that Wyatt's is not in here. Reason being, I did an entire square out of Wyatt's and it just did not look right. The yarn, like I mentioned when I showed his socks, the Mothy and the Squid yarn, is a very thin fingering weight. So I think what I'm gonna do is just maybe even hold to this, that yarn. You know, I'll use that yarn but hold it double and it won't give the same effect probably um, unless I match them up exactly as it would by itself but it might give me the substantial you know of the yarn to make the square somewhat of the right size you know some yarns you have and they're your squares are different sizes and it doesn't end up being too big of a deal but this one was it was a lot smaller than the other squares and everything was the same I mean I cast on the same amount of stitches everything was good it just didn't look quite right yes Cozy Memories, it's going right along. So what do we have next? I'm gonna show you some goodies I got. So I will be right back with those. Okay, 
So I have some goodies to show and I sat down <laughs> with them and I realized I don't really have that much to show you because I've already shown you some of them. I showed you the um, bag from Tracy of bags she built. I showed you the Malabrigo Rios yarn for my Schlanket and the Grocery Girls bag from Eric. Those were all things I've gotten since the last time I podcasted. So that kind of took care of a chunk of it. I do have two more things that I will show you. And I honestly, I'm looking around, it's kind of a mess in here right now, but I'm looking around to make sure I'm not forgetting anything, but I think that is it that I have to really show um, that I've gotten since the last time I talked to y'all. But I will show you, I picked up some Patton's Croy. And this is green striped rag. And I picked this up from Hobby Lobby when I was there after Christmas. I took the kids down um, to spend some of their Christmas money to one of the cities nearby. And I was glad to find this. I have only ever seen Patton's Croy at Joann's. And we do not have a Joann's. I think there's one in is it Jacksonville. I could be totally wrong because I haven't been there yet. But I think there's one there, but it, I believe it's like 45 minute hour drive, if I'm not mistaken. So I've not been yet. Um, I just haven't had the need to go. So I have not been able to get my hands on Patton's Croy in a while. And I really like Patton's Croy. So I was happy to see they only had two colorways though. And the other one, Wyatt has a pair of socks in already. So I picked this up for Austin. So I didn't have much of a choice or I probably would have got more but I did get that. And then I also, I had ordered this a few months back. I can't remember what day it actually came on, if it was before or after Christmas. But this is from Desert Vista Dye Works and the colorway is Little Women. Is that upside down? Yes. And this is their 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 462 yards. And I really like this colorway. Little Women is, I love the book. I love the old movie. I like the new one with, newish one with Winona Ryder as well. But the old one is, that's the kind of stuff I grew up watching. Like we love that stuff as kids. We would watch it on repeat. We would play Little Women. I was always Meg because apparently I've always been the motherly of our cousin bunch that we used to play like that um playhouse and things when we were kids but um I was always Meg so I just love Little Women it just has such good memories and it's such a good good story so I love that Desert Vista Dye Works does colorways for movies for shows um for books that is one thing that draws me to yarn is the name and the reference <laughs> So that is really what drew me to this. I do love the collars, um, but I love them even more because of Little Women. And I think the book that I have actually matches this exactly. I'll have to pull it out and see, but I think it's these exact collars, the book that I have. So that is really it for things that I have acquired. I have ordered a few more things. Um, they are not here yet. They should have been here yesterday, but the post office is around here, everything it's so crazy. I think I've told you guys before, things go to Fayetteville and then they either sit in Fayetteville or they detour to Greensboro in Columbia, South Carolina, and then they finally end up in Havelock. I don't know who's sorting the mail, but they're sending it the wrong way. So yes, um, it could have been Christmas crazy. That's kind of when it started was before Christmas, but yes, we'll see when it gets here because the tracking has not been updated since the things that I've ordered left there original location so we will see but I had talked before about how I was going to use more of my stash and that's something I'll get into more in chatter as well but I did order some things but they have specific purposes I did not order the sweater quantity for the Victoria sweater that I had talked about doing instead I decided to order a few shawls worth of yarn so when I get those I'll talk about what they're for and what patterns and all of that um, but I did want to let you guys know I am still being mindful of my yarn purchases since I did talk about that. I did fall off the bandwagon a little bit, but I have truly not been that bad and I am being more mindful about what I buy and why.
Okay, I had a few questions in the Ask Me thread, which if you have any questions, please head over there. I love, I will either answer them on there um, if there's something that can't really wait till the next podcast, you know, um, I'll go ahead and, and answer them there or I'll try to answer them on the podcast. So I was excited to have a few questions. And speaking of the group, we've had so many new members on the group. It has been insane. The chatter, the activity level on the group is awesome. So please go join if you have not already. The first question that I had was about nine inch circulars. Um, it was from Handmade Spirit on Ravelry. And she said, hello Kay, my question is about using nine inch circular needles. How do you do the heels? Do you use other needles? It just seems they would be, it just seems they would be too small to do heels. Thank you so much. Okay, nine inch circulars, I've talked a little bit about before and I love them. I truly do and I'm hoping, I haven't used them in a while and I'm hoping to use them soon kind of get back into using them with socks. My go-to for nine inch circulars is chow goo when you're doing heels on these. And if you guys want more of a detailed, um, you know, talk about nine inch circulars, I'm more than happy to do that. And I will try to have some works in progress to show you. Just let me know if there's actually any interest in something that detailed. But with these, when you're doing the heels, it does seem like, I mean, obviously it is a small circumference. It is, especially when you're used to DPNs or Magic Loop. You don't have as much to work with here. But when you're doing the heels, it is truly, you can do the heels on this. I've done it before, you can do it. It seems impossible until you're into it and until you're doing it. That's really like the best advice I could give is to just do it and try it. It will seem impossible until you get going and then it's nothing. What I usually do is when, you know, you're just working in the round. Um, usually I've, I've always done cuff down with these, but you're just working along and you're ready for the heel. What I do the round before I start the heel is put in stitch markers to split what will be the front of the sock, which will stay on this side, and then what will be the heel, which will be on this side. So what I will do is put in a stitch marker on each side just so that I am aware coming up to the heel, what are my heel stitches and what are, you know, for the front of your foot. So once you've done that and you come to do the heel, you can do a fish lips kiss heel, gusset, or um, heel flap, heel turn, gusset, the whole nine yards. You do not need other needles. You can do it on these. You truly can. Just do it and and see, I don't know, that's really the, the thing. It seems impossible until you do it. It truly does. I remember thinking there's no way you can do a heel on that. And for a while, I was taking two DPNs. I would keep my stitches that were not my heel on the cable and just leave these hang. And you could put stoppers on them if you wanted, but I never had any problems with anything falling off. I would just leave them hang. And then I would have two DPNs up here and I would work along the heel flap up here with two DPNs, just going back and forth. And then when I was ready to do the gusset, I would, you know, go back, put those stitches on my eight inch, do the gusset and continue on with the foot. So you can do that. If you are worried that it's gonna be too small or you do it and you don't like the feel of doing your heel on this because everyone might not enjoy the feel of it because it does feel Especially your first time doing it, I think like, oh my gosh, can I do the heel flap? And I know people that find it's more comfortable just to do it on two DPNs, do your heel flap. But you can do it all on eight inch circulars. You absolutely can, or nine inch, right? Nine inch, yeah. Eight inch is Addy. Addy does make some, but they're eight inch and I have not tried those. So yes. You can do them all in here, I promise. Whether or not it's comfortable for you is another story and that's just something you have to try it out and see, um, but it is doable. So if you have any other questions about nine inch, like I said, and if you want more of a detailed talk about the different nine inch circulars that there are, the differences between them, um, you wanna see a heel in progress on these, let me know. Um, while it may not be this next upcoming podcast before I get, you know, that many socks done to show you the progress on them on the nine inch circulars. I am happy to put together something um, 
maybe the first podcast of February or something. I can have some socks in progress and ready to show you the different steps. Okay. Next question that I had is about wool wash. And that is from, and I'm probably going to butcher this, is it Kerbia one? And she says, hi, Kay, I was wondering what kind of wool wash or bar you use. Thanks. Okay. I have only ever used two kinds. I, the first one I ever used was just a soak. And I have a bunch of these samples from Jimmy Bean's wool because Eric had ordered me for Christmas um, in 2015. A, I think it was for Christmas. It might have been for my birthday. But anyways, it was like a subscription where every month I got a different little zipper pouch with different things in it. And it was really fun. So he had ordered me that. And with it, every month would come a sample. So the first one I ever tried was the soak. And I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I cannot remember what the scent was. It could have even been an unscented. But that was the thing that I was not... It didn't have that much of a scent. Which didn't really make a difference to me. It worked fine, um, it did its job, you know, everything was good with that. But it didn't have a big scent. And like I said, it didn't make a big deal. I didn't really care until, and this is a mess, and I apologize <laughs> that this is not that pretty. Until I used Tuft Woolens. And like I said, this is a mess, this packaging right here. Um, this is Tuft Woolens Chai Spice. This is what I have left of my bar. It's just so small now. It smells heavenly. Oh my goodness. I love it. Absolutely love it. So the soak worked fine. It did its job. It worked perfectly fine. And I have not tried the other, the other scents. I will say that I've only used the one that I used and I can't remember what it was. If they make it unscented, it may have been unscented. Um, but it just didn't have a strong scent. So there was that. But I used the Tuft Woolens and immediately became hooked to Tuft Woolens. It does its job and more. Let me tell you, the scent, it lingers on your stuff and it smells amazing, especially this chai spice because chai is my absolute favorite tea. Um, smells oh my gosh there are no words I wish you could smell it but this is all that's left